Hi guys, so Keir Starmer, the leader of the opposition, the leader of the Labour Party, was invited onto Nick Ferrari's LBC radio show on Monday morning. Now, they were talking about Brexit, the pandemic, Boris Johnson, and also Keir Starmer was taking calls from the public. Now, in one particular call from a lady called Gemma in Cambridge, and I don't know if she's really called Gemma and she's really from Cambridge, but she asked a question surrounding a particular conspiracy theory that was smuggled in under the guise of another question that, you know, and this conspiracy theory went completely over the head of both Nick Ferrari and unfortunately Keir Starmer. So let's get to the question and the comment. Let's go to other calls. Uh, Gemma's in Cambridge. Gemma, you're on the radio. Good morning. Hi there. Good morning, Nick. Thanks, hi, Gemma. Uh, thanks for having me on. Thanks, hi, hi, Kia. Thanks for having me on. It's wonderful to speak with you. Um, so I'm actually calling about something that happened um, a few weeks ago, a couple of weeks ago. I'm sure you heard it in the news, the, the booing at Millwall. Oh. Um, my my husband was actually there as part of the the, the spectators, and he joined in the booing. Okay, so <laughs> this was a bit uh, um, surprising. So you would imagine that, okay, she called in and she said, uh, you know, my husband was at the Millwall match and there was booing. And the, when, while I was listening to this live, I was expecting her to say, look, my husband was not booing. It was a very small minority. Uh, this has been, you know, maybe blown out of all a proportion. Uh, no, <laughs> the opposite. Her husband partake partake uh, partook sorry in the booing as well um he has since been clumped and labeled as as a racist um but if you just bear with me because i'm sure we're we, we're probably I... quite ignorant about the whole thing so i'm just interested to hear well can um, i can i ask you and then I'll, i promise you kill so will talk um have you asked your husband why he booed yes i did and my, would, what did he say I mean, I'd, I'd ask you not to use any offensive language if that's where we're going, but... Oh, no, no, no. Um, well, this is what I'm saying. I'm sure we're quite ignorant about the whole thing. Um, but in the wake of organisations like BLM and other racial advocacy groups pushing what's best for their people, um, I just want to ask, should white people also start playing identity politics now before they become a minority themselves by 2066? OK, so what she's doing here is she's smuggling in her conspiracy theory, the idea that white people in the UK will become a minority, an ethnic minority in the year 2066. This is a white nationalist conspiracy theory. Now, she's she's been very clever because she started talking about something else and she smuggled this onto the airwaves. So now people who are listening to this, who are maybe not informed about these types of things, will imagine, uh, oh really, is there this um, this issue that, uh, that, you know, is this true? That um, the, the white population in the UK will become a minority in 2066? Is that something I should be concerned about? Because the, the first question of course was about booing and she smuggled in this conspiracy theory and she would been very clever and articulate in her uh, wording of this. Don't go, secure. Uh, Gemma, um, I, I, I don't think it was right to boo. There's no getting. <laughs> now, this has gone completely over the head of Keir Starmer and, of course, Nick Ferrari. And I'm and while I was listening to this live, I was shocked. Now I don't know if Keir Starmer was distracted and he wasn't listening to everything she was saying. Maybe he was like ruffling some papers or he was. Uh, checking his phone and also Nick Ferrari didn't pick up on this either away from that I really don't think it was the right thing to do um, do you agree players... with freedom of expression that people have the right to do that yeah, of, co of course I agree with freedom of expression, but I, but, but that is also the freedom for me to say I think it's the wrong thing to do. Um, and I do. And I, I'm, Let's I, just hear from Sakir. I will come back um, to you. Gemma, Gemma I'm, really, to I'm really struck, actually, that most, I think pretty well all clubs, all fans across um, the piece are applauding um, the taking of the knee. Certainly um, all the clubs that I've seen um, are, are applauding. See, this is, this is extremely worrying. Keir Starmer and Nick Ferrari have completely missed the real reason why she has called in. She's using the booing 
as a, a Trojan horse. They're distracted about the booing and she has now a platform to push this conspiracy theory. Recording that, I think Millwall was an outlier in that respect. I think it was wrong. But I think it also, you know, what this represents is a recognition of injustice that has gone on for many, many years in relation to racial inequality. And it's come to a head this year, as everybody knows. And we just need to hold on to that, because I think actually most people feel that where there's an injustice, it needs to be put right. Um, and that's what is signalled by taking the knee and the players and the referees um, very often take the knee. And I think um, that's what it's symbolic of. I mean, even Les Ferdinand, who you'll probably know, just to remind my listeners, was a very successful football player, happens to be a black fellow himself. He's now the first black man to be a director of football. He's with the championship Queen's Park Rangers. And he says it is hollow. It's like a fancy hashtag or a lapel. It's his... <laughs> so Ferdinand disagrees with Black Lives Matter. So that means Black Lives Matter is the, is the, is wrong because one guy disagrees with them maybe he's a powerful guy he's a you know in a senior position in the foot in the football association or in football in general that means that he's he's more correct that doesn't make any sense he's achieving nothing well, I don't... we call this an argument from authority look he's in a in a position of authority that must mean that he's right no doesn't mean he's right a position stands or falls on its own merits I think that's right. What? Well, what? I think the counter a man who played football. But, <laughs> but I've also fallen into the trap as well because I'm talking about something that's not related to what she actually really called in about. For England, I mean, he, he's in a position of knowledge, isn't he? So oh, he is, of course, and I respect his view, of course. So it doesn't mean I agree with it. Um, I think that what's happened over the many years. This is the counter argument. It's quite a powerful one. Is that there is um, racial inequality, there is injustice, and from time to time. It you know, becomes an issue, it's looked at for a few weeks, and then it goes away. And this is an attempt to keep the focus on it until things really change. Hasn't the round now focused just on taking the knee? And the important issue of getting black managers, black directors of football, black chairmen or chairwomen of clubs, I mean, that's been lost because we just take the knee. So no, I don't, I don't think it's one or the other. I think you can do both, and it's right. a way of drawing attention um, to it. But, I, you know, in the right. end, it's for each individual to decide how but they want to tackle injustice. Why did you, uh, Gemma, why did your husband... Sorry, you didn't quite explain, if I may go there again. Why did he choose not... To, uh, cho choose to boo, sorry. Because if anything, the racial inequality is now against the indigenous people of Britain because we are... Notice the language she's using, the indigenous people of Britain. The indigenous people of Britain. So if you were born in Britain, if your grandfather was born in Britain, your parents were born in Britain and you were born in Britain, but you're not quote-unquote indigenous then what are you? Are you British or are you something else? Now, this is an interesting position because this was actually raised on um, Majid's, uh, who's also a commentator on LBC, where he was challenged by a similar individual who brought up the point saying, you know, you're not British, you're Pakistani. And Majid said, no, I was born here in Britain. So what does that make me? And the, the guy continued to say, no, you're Pakistani, you're not British. <laughs> and while I was listening to that, I don't know why these two came at the same time, but these two videos, while I was listening to that, I thought to myself, if I, you know, I'm white, I don't know if pe most people know, I don't know if most people know that, but it's, you know, it's not relevant to this channel. But if I'm white, if I was born in Pakistani, in, sorry, in Pakistan, that would make me Pakistani. Pakistani is not a skin colour. It's a nationality. If I was born in China, I would be Chinese. Now, you can say, well, you don't look Chinese or you, you don't have any, you're not ethnic Chinese or whatever, but I would be Chinese. My passport would say I'm Chinese. If I'm born in Britain, I'm British. If I'm born in Ireland, I'm Irish. If I'm born in Italy, I'm, I'm Italian. This idea of going back generations doesn't make a lot of sense because why should... It's, it's actually quite arbitrary. Because what if I say, well, you know, my great-grandfather, um, he is, he, he, you know, my great-great-great-grandfather was German and then he moved to Britain 
and he met my great 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 grandmother does that count am i british or is it this is once again this once you start going down this rabbit hole you realize that these these people are pushing basically racism we want white we want britain to be white we don't want it to be anything but white but their definition of white continues to like shift or fall apart as soon as you start to poke holes in it now set to become a minority by 2066 and taking the knee bringing that into bringing the political sphere into the football arena um and we just have to look across to the middle east you know israel has a state law that they are the only people in that country to have self-determination well why can't i as a as a white british female have that same right final point to you on this secure but well, Gemma, we we all have those rights this is about recognizing some injustice has gone on for a very very long time <sighs> okay kira let, you know i have a huge amount of respect for Keir starmer i think he would make a good prime minister you know <laughs> the bar at the moment has been set so low you know I could be a better prime minister <laughs> than Boris Johnson. <laughs> that's how that's how low the bar is. Okay, so you know, Keir Starmer, I have a huge amount of respect for him, but on this issue, he was asleep at the wheel. I mean, I think people were genuinely moved this year um, and want to make sure that that injustice is, is dealt with. And you know, people will look at it different ways, but I think the vast majority of people do want um, a more equal society. This is extremely dangerous, as I said before, because this person has smuggled in a conspiracy theory inside something that's topical or something that, you know, hidden behind free speech or hidden behind something else. And this is a different approach to a conspiracy theory than you than you normally find. You know, there are people who will call in and say, ah, I don't want to wear a mask because it's a muzzle or whatever. And these people are, you know, it's easy to identify these people because, you know, they're, they're generally not very articulate, they're angry, they're aggressive, um, and they, go, they jump straight into their conspiracy theory. Others are much more subtle and they're able to smuggle it in, you know, packaged in something. Maybe it, the packaging isn't beautiful, but what you're doing is you're focusing on the packaging. You're not focusing on what's contained inside. And once again, I'm a little bit disappointed that Keir Starmer didn't pick up on this. You know, maybe he was distracted. But fortunately, in the news, I've been reading that Labour MPs, <clears throat> excuse me, have picked up on this and they have warned him about it. What did you think about this, this call? What did you think about Keir Starmer's response to it? And what did you care? What did you think about Nick Ferrari's um, obliviousness to this? As always, your comments are greatly appreciated. Thanks a lot. I want to say a big, big thank you to all of my patrons. You ensure that this channel continues to exist. I'm eternally grateful for all of your support. If you join Patreon, you will receive instant access to our Discord server, where we have both audio and video chats. You can chat with me and other patrons, where we discuss important and non-important issues. Becoming a patron per month costs about the same as a large coffee, so why not check it out?